Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. The giant panda of the genus Iluropoda must be one of the most instantly recognisable animals on Earth. With its distinctive black and white colour scheme, rounded features and general adorableness, these bears have also sadly become the poster animal for endangered species as a whole. The bears' unusual dietary preferences are also famous, being a carnivoran mammal that feeds primarily on bamboo, utilising a false thumb on its paws to help grip and hold its food. Despite sharing a name and diet with the much smaller red panda, the two are not closely related, with the latter being closer to weasels and raccoons. Dwelling in the mountainous regions of Sichuan, Gansu and Shanxi regions of China, the giant panda was once native to much of the country in addition to Southeast Asia, but has suffered severe population reductions in response to human activities. Indeed, the panda has become so strongly tied to its country of origin that it has become something of an unofficial symbol for China internationally. However, the evolutionary history of these bears is not as well known, and until relatively recently, panda precursors in the fossil record were rare. In the last decade or so, new finds have come to light that have given us more of an insight into the origins of the panda subfamily Iluropodinae. Despite early 20th century debates regarding the placement of the giant panda, which saw the animal as either a basal bear or a member of the raccoon family, genetic testing has put this argument to rest, with DNA analysis revealing the animal to be a true bear within the family Ursidae. It is, however, a member of the most basal subfamily of living bears, Iluropodinae, which diverged roughly 19 million years ago. Ancestral panda relatives were far less specialised than the giant panda, with appearances and diets more similar to those of modern brown and black bears. In addition, certain genera possessed very wide ranges, inhabiting most of Eurasia and North America during the late Miocene. One of these wide-ranging Iluropodines was the genus Indarctos. Fossils of Indarctos were first discovered in India, hence the genus name, but as time went on it was discovered that this prolific genus of bear was actually living across most of Asia, Europe and North America, especially the western United States, though remains have been found as far south as Florida. This was a medium-sized bear, roughly overlapping with modern American black bears, with the 12 known species weighing between 60 and 400 kilograms, that is, up to 880 pounds. The best known species, such as Indarctos punjabiensis, stood about 1.2 meters tall at the shoulder. Indarctos was an omnivorous generalist, inhabiting the role that the modern genus Ursus does today. Indeed, if we were to encounter these bears in life, the different species may have appeared very different from each other and inhabited quite separate ecological niches. Bears such as this gave rise to all later Iluropodines, including an early example of a herbivorous form in the genus Myomatsi. Inhabiting what is now Hungary circa 10 million years ago, and with a name meaning teddy bear in Hungarian, Myomatsi is known from fossilised teeth that demonstrate similarities to those of the giant panda. The team that discovered the animal compared the shape, structure and wear patterns of the teeth with those of other bears. Such wear patterns, created when food being chewed scrapes away some tooth enamel, can reveal what an animal ate, and in this case they were similar to those of giant pandas. Both species consumed tough plant foods, requiring shearing rather than crushing of food during chewing. This tells us that the way of life of the panda's ancestors was likely very similar to the modern animal. However, these adaptations were not as extreme as in its extant cousin, and Myomatsi was likely not a direct ancestor of the modern form. It is also not known if the genus fed mostly on bamboo, probably simply eating tough woody plants instead. Hungary may seem like an odd place to find an ancient relative of pandas, but during the Miocene, Europe was covered in humid subtropical forests similar to those in southern China today. While Myomatsi may have only been a side branch in Iluropodian evolution, another Miocene bear from Europe, Kretzoyarctos, may have been ancestral to modern giant pandas and their extinct Asian relatives. Dwelling in the mid to late Miocene of Spain, this was a very small animal by the standards of the family, weighing just 60 kilograms, or about 130 pounds. Kretzoyarctos is known from a fossilised set of jaws and teeth, 
and based on tooth structure, researchers have speculated that this species may have been a small herbivorous bear that ate very hard plants. Although postcranial elements are not known, the animal would have likely resembled the modern giant panda, albeit only about half the size and would have been quite adorable. Like Myomatsi, the animal inhabited humid, closed forests, and the extinction of Europe's proto-pandas is surely connected to the drying climatic trends that took place there by the end of the Miocene. This also coincides with the first appearance of Asian Iluropodians in the fossil record, which are known from China starting from about 8 million years ago. It is possible that ancestral European pandas, similar to the Kretzoi Arctos, migrated into Asia during the late Miocene, where they found more suitable habitat conditions than in their drying homeland. We know that many other animals migrated across this region via the Middle East, including Dinotherium and various species of apes. Regardless, the genus Iluroctos, which is known from sites across late Miocene China, is thought to have been directly ancestral to the modern panda. Like Kretsoi Arctos, this was a very small bear, comparable in size to today's sun bears. It is best known from the Lufeng area of Yunnan province, and inhabited environmental conditions very much like those in the region in modern times. By roughly 2-3 to three million years ago, Iluroctos had gone extinct and was replaced by its descendant genus Iluropoda, to which living pandas belong. The oldest known species within Iluropoda was Iluropoda microta, the so-called pygmy panda. It measured one meter in length, while the modern giant panda grows to a size in excess of 1.5 meters. Wear patterns on its teeth suggest it lived on a diet of bamboo. The first discovered skull of the animal in a South China limestone cave was estimated to be roughly 2 million years old, dated to the late Pliocene and or early Pleistocene. The skull found is about half the size of a modern day giant pandas, but is anatomically very similar. This little bear would have been a contemporary of the massive ape Gigantopithecus and inhabited the same closed subtropical forests. Following this was the poorly known species Iluropoda wuling shanensis and, by about 750,000 years ago, the large Iluropoda baconi. This species was more massive than modern pandas, with a heavily built skull and large crushing molars. It is presumed to have been the ancestor of the extant giant panda, but this is far from certain. Today, Iluropoda melanoleuca remains the only living species. The giant panda was once widespread throughout southern and eastern China, as well as in neighbouring Myanmar and Vietnam. But due to expanding human populations and development, the species is now restricted to around 20 isolated patches of bamboo forest, in six mountain ranges in China's Sichuan, Shanxi and Guangzhou provinces. There are two notable subspecies. The familiar nominate Iluropoda melanoleuca melanoleuca consists of most extant populations of the giant panda. These animals are principally found in Sichuan and display the typical stark black and white coloured fur. The other is the Qinling panda Iluropoda melanoleuca chinlingensis and is restricted to the Qinling Mountains in Shanxi at elevations of 1,300 to 3,000 meters. The typical black and white pattern of Sichuan pandas is replaced with a light brown and white pattern. The skull of Iluropoda melanoleuca chinlingensis is smaller than its relatives and it has larger molars. A detailed study of the giant panda's genetic history from 2012 confirms that the separation of the Qinling population occurred about 300,000 years ago. Thankfully, determined efforts by zoos and conservation centres have substantially increased the number of pandas in captivity, and the IUCN now lists them as vulnerable, not endangered. Hopefully these unique and charismatic bears can avoid the fate of their ancient European relatives with a little help from humans. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will deal with the early history of Pseudosuchia, including the Ornithosuchids. See you again soon. Cheerio.